Hi there, my name is Stephanie and today I'm going to teach you how to make a travel jewelry bag. It has a drawstring and when you open it up it has eight individual little pouches for earrings and then a middle part for your bracelets and your necklaces so that everything stays organized while you're away and on vacation. Nothing's going to get lost and it can collapse nice and small to stay handy in your suitcase. The materials that you need to make this project is 0.4 meters of fabric, 84 inches of some sort of ribbon or drawstring um, or cording, and obviously the free PDF pattern that's available below this video. Just check your scale to make sure it's an accurate size. So let's go ahead and get started. You will need to cut out two small circles, one of your main fabric and one out of your lining and two large circles. Again, one out of your outside and one out of your lining. This little circle template is just for marking. This does not need to be cut out of fabric. To start, you're going to take your two small circles and place them right sides together. So I'm gonna flip mine over, and so one is on top of the other, and you're gonna pin around the whole outside of your circle, leaving about a two inch opening somewhere along the circle so we can flip it right side out. You're gonna follow the 5 8 seam allowance or 15 line um, as your guide. Once you are done sewing around your circle and leaving your two inch opening, trim around your edges. I left my full seam allowance behind where the opening was, but I trimmed my seam allowance to about a quarter inch all the way around to reduce bulk. This will allow for your circle to flip and sit nicer once turned right side out. Once you have trimmed your seam allowance and flipped your small circle right side out, give it a nice press with the iron so it stays nice and smooth along the edges. You will tuck in your opening and press that. It will get sealed and with a top stitch shortly. Now you're going to place your small finished circle on top of your big circle. On top of the outside fabric, this one has not had our lining joined yet. We're going to mark sort of the middle. So it's about two and a half inches all the way around. You can center that. And then go ahead and trace with a chalk marking the circumference of the small circle as a marking. I have marked my small circle, the size of it around onto my big outside circle. Now I will plan where my buttonholes go. Buttonholes are for our cording to be able to come out. And so I'm just gonna place my ruler down half of my circle. And I'm just gonna draw myself a little marking here. And then a little marking up there. So they're halfway across our circle. This is where our buttonholes will be made. If you don't have a buttonhole foot or you're not sure how to make a buttonhole on your machine, you can simply just stitch a small half inch circle, a small circle with your sewing machine and stitch it. And then we'll be cutting it open. And this prevents it from traveling uh, past that stitch circle so that your tear or your little slice where your cording comes out cannot keep traveling. The stitching will sort of seal the edges. A buttonhole is definitely the prepared or the preferred, sorry, method in this. So today I'm sewing with a Janome sewing machine and I have my buttonhole foot right here. I'm not actually going to put a button in the foot. I'm just going to make it so that the little legs in the foot right here are open about a half inch so that it makes a buttonhole approximately a half inch long. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach to this to my sewing machine. So I'm gonna remove this foot and I'm going to place this foot right underneath that bar and lower my foot and it will automatically pick up that foot. Now remember to pull down your sensor on your foot because though that will uh, allow your machine to sense how big of a buttonhole to make. Another thing you have to adjust is to select that we're doing a buttonhole. So I'm going to turn my pattern selector to buttonhole. And then a few dials we have to change here. 
I'm going to make my stitch width go to a five and my stitch length to uh, just about a half. It'll be a little denser of a buttonhole. And so it goes backwards first when we sew. So I've made my marking here. And so I'm going to put my jewelry bag, my large circle, and I'm going to line it up just past to start just past my small circle marking. So it's going to go backwards towards more of the outside of the circle. So I've had my buttonhole lined up with about a quarter inch just past my marking of my small circle. And it's gonna go backwards first. So it's gonna to start to head towards the larger outside cut edge. So I'm gonna create my buttonhole now. So I'm just gonna do the beginning, it's gonna go backwards. It it up automatically and then I just have to stop when it reaches the starting point again. So that's as easy as a buttonhole gets. When you pull it out, you have this nice half inch buttonhole that we will slice open in a second. So go ahead and do your second buttonhole on the exact opposite side. Once your buttonholes are finished, we're gonna cut them open. So the easiest way without actually having a buttonhole cutter is just to fold your buttonhole in half and make a tiny, tiny little slit with your shears and then lay it flat open and just trim right up to both ends without going through the stitching so that you get um, a nice opening where your casing will come through. So now it is time to do the same thing we did with our small circles. We're going to place our circles good sides together. Our buttonholes have been cut open and we are going to follow the 15 line all the way around our circle and leaving about a two inch opening so that we can flip it right side out. Okay, don't forget to trim your seam allowances to quarter inch before flipping right side out. I've sewn all the way around my large circle with right sides together. I've left an opening for about two inches to flip it. And now I'm gonna continue trimming away about half that seam allowance to make it about a quarter inch and then I will flip it right side out and give it a press. I have now flipped my large circle and given it a press. I'm going to edge stitch around both circles separately. So I'm gonna close up my little opening while doing this and I'm gonna stitch really close to this outside edge all the way around. I do not go too deep. I would say quarter inch if not closer to your outside edge is the best for edge stitching. I have edge, edge stitched along both my small circle and my big circle's outer edge. That has now sealed our opening shut. So we can now go and top stitch our small circle line that we marked earlier on. We're gonna just stitch right on top of that circle. And then we're gonna do a second row following the 20 line from your outside edge. So I'm gonna be following this edge following the 20 or 6 eighths line along my sewing machine and I'm going to do a second row all the way around. This is going to form a tunnel on either side of your buttonhole for your drawstring to be fed through. So as you can see, I've stitched on my small circle line that was marked and then I followed my 6 8 line from my outside circle edge and I did a second circle. So now I have a tunnel that will run from our buttonhole openings all the way around our circle for our drawstring to be fed through. Our next step is going to be tracing our small circle template. This is the one that we didn't actually cut out of fabric. And we're going to do the similar thing to the beginning. And we're going to just trace around and make this a nice circle marking on our small uh, circle piece. Once you've drawn your small circle line all the way around, we're going to divide our sm small circle piece with four equal lines. It'll create eight different quadrants. They should be as close to um, similar size as possible so that ultimately you get eight equal pockets for your jewelry. 
So I've made two lines where I've sort of drawn them just in half and you are drawing your line from all the way from one side across to the other. I'm going to now intersect these two quad quadrants and create eights now. So I will draw one line this way and then a final line that way. So at the end we'll have eight pockets. Once you've made your four lines and eight pockets, you're going to pin it on to the inside of your big circle. So I'm going to flip my circle over to my lining side and I'm going to just place this small circle face up and I'm just going to make sure that my small circle is right along my stitching line that I've sewn to form my casing. And now you're going to stitch down all of these lines. Make sure you give it a nice back stitch at beginning and end because you will be tucking things into those pockets and pulling on those top edges. So you'll do four lines and then you're also going to sew around that circle marking as well. You're attaching it to both pieces at this point. Now you should have your small circle attached to your large circle and you have these lovely little pockets where earrings and such can go. We're going to flip it over. I've already done one of my casings, but you have lots of options to what kind of ribbon or cording you want to use. I have just a contrasting. Mine's just actually an eighth of an inch wide, but you can most certainly use quarter inch, um, three eighths wide. You can use actual cording if you have a shoelace at home. All these things will work great for your drawstrings. You're going to go and use a safety pin on one end of your um, ribbon and you're going to start through one of your buttonholes and you're going to work it all the way around. You don't come out that buttonhole but you keep on going all the way around until you come out the same one that you started in. And then you would do the same to your other side. This side is done for me already. I went all the way around and came out the same buttonhole. So I'm going to go ahead and do this to this side. This will now give you enough for tails and tie these ribbons together and knot those two together to be able to pull on. Once you have knotted the ends of your drawstring or ribbon together, you are done. You can give it a pull tie it in the front to keep all your items secure and of course now it's the fun part on going to stuff your jewelry bag. So you should have now eight little individual pockets where you can put some earrings and such in there and then the middle for some bracelets and necklaces and it's great that it can all collapse, stay tucked in and secure and small enough to throw in your suitcase the next time you go ahead and travel. I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial today. Please subscribe to my channel for more easy to make sewing projects.